John Guttag. I'm a professor of electrical engineering and computer science and a member of CSAIL. My research is at the intersection of computer science and clinical medicine. I try to bring to bear sophisticated computer science technology to problems of importance in the field of healthcare. Inevitably, it involves not just bringing state-of-the-art techniques to bear, but changing the state of the art. As you can tell by looking at my face, I've been in this business a long time. I started in software engineering, moved from there into wireless networking and software-defined radios. I spent 10 years in administration, the last half dozen as head of the electrical engineering and computer science department. It became clear to me that as we looked at where both electrical engineering and computer science were heading, there were enormous opportunities to have a positive impact in the world by moving a lot of our departmental research towards medicine and healthcare in general. And if I thought that was the right direction for the department is to head, maybe it was the right direction for me to head. So that was one incentive. Uh, the other thing that went on is Shortly before I stepped down as department head, uh, one of my children became ill and spent a lot of time in the hospital. I should say he's fine now. As I hung out at the hospital for way more hours than one would like to, um, with the typical hubris of an engineer, I said, oh, this is not good. There have to be better ways to do these things. When I stepped down as department head, I took a year's sabbatical and spent it at uh, Mass General Hospital. I went there thinking I would take the research I'd been doing in wireless networking and software-defined radios and look at ways to build better medical devices. And what I noticed that where there was a huge gap was not so much in the device end of the world, but in the data science end of the world. That increasingly medicine was accumulating vast amounts of information, and yet they didn't know what to do with it. And so I reoriented myself and said, no, let's back away from devices and let's think instead, how can we take this treasure trove of data and turn it into useful information? One of the things we've emphasized a lot in recent years is building predictive models. The basic notion, and I'm sure you've all heard a lot about this idea of personalized medicine. Most people tend to think of it as being involved in genomics. We have a different tack. Uh, so much of what determines our health is not our genes, but our medical history, our lifestyle. Um, we decided to look at a lot of those issues, not ignoring genomics, but not focusing exclusively or even primarily on genomics, and see if we could understand not only the course of predicted health if no intervention was done, but which interventions were likely to alter someone's healthcare trajectory in a positive direction. Who would respond well to a medication, who wouldn't respond at all, and who might have responded adversely? Same thing with, say, a surgical intervention. Um, so we decided to see if we could look at data and build models that would predict what would happen if. Now, of course, these models are not perfect. No model is ever perfect. Some are useful. But this is all probabilistic. So we can't say, yes, if you take this medicine, you'll be better. But we can say, here's what we think the probability of this medicine helping you 